Okay, what we heard there was my own impulse responses. Two of them captured with different mics. And we heard both of them. Uh, Soldano, model, and then a little bit of delay and reverb. And this video will show you how to use Studio One's Impulse Response Maker to get impulse responses out of your cabinets or just speakers. I'll show the routing, the software mixer settings, and my isolation box that I have my speaker in and how I set it up to get good captures. Let's hear it one more time. <laughs> without the delay and reverb. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so let's look at the connections from my audio interface. Headphone one. I'm taking a basic guitar cable and I'm hooking it up into my Joyo and in to the return of the effects loop and then I have two mics in my isolation box so those are input 3 and 4 I can later choose which one of them I want to make an impulse record response with and then I have my guitar hooked up on input 1 then we have our isolation box and the speaker output from the Joyo is running into that one. Inside, I'll show you, we have this. So there we go. And it's actually a green back that I have here. I have two mics connected to the inputs 3 and 4 of the audio interface and the speaker is hooked up to the Joyo and that's how I'm gonna be taking the impulse responses and those are the connections we need to make okay so let's deal with the Focusrite control and you might have something else, of course, but the software mixer for the audio interface. And what's important here is my output. I don't want to hear the actual monitor or playback output on that output. So I have muted that one and I keep everything else because I don't do direct monitoring so I have all of these muted on my headphones actual headphone output as well but this is important so you don't get the audio loop the feedback if that happens be ready to turn every volume down on your audio interface and then fix the issue by looking into it and checking what's wrong but then once this is figured out we can go to our DAW and there we go and in here I actually have already the iron maker on track one set up I'm gonna show you how the setup is done and on on another audio track I have amplitude so I can bring in 
the impulse responses that I have created into Amplitude and test them out. But let's go through the settings. So I uh, took the Iron Maker and put it on track one. And I'm choosing for the input, I'm choosing either of my microphone inputs from the microphones that are on the speaker. So that would be in my case, like I showed, input three or input four. We're gonna keep input four there right now. It's a mono track. And then we'll go here and we need to put this output going into our headphone once. So we go to the song setup and in here we need to make an output for it. I'm gonna create a mono and my headphone output is the outputs three and four since it's a stereo output but I'm just gonna add a mono and it's gonna be output three hit apply okay and then we will choose that output for our IR maker channel and then you can click and detect the latency compensation so here the latency compensation as it shows you just click it and if this comes up it says that you are not feeding your amplifier enough so then we have to turn off or up our output and then click again and there we have our latency compensation and then we can turn down our output if we need to normalize good to have on so you don't have to do that later if we wouldn't have normalize on and we would make a ir we would have to turn up this in amplitude like all the way to the max depending on our output and input levels but i've noticed i'm gonna just keep this on always there's a little help here that actually says that we should have there's the setup it explains what to do and you know but it says we should have 0 0.01 or four cabinets but I've tried to set it lower than this it just won't do so that's the shortest I've been able to do and I've tweaked around with this and I noticed that 10 seconds is uh, actually a good sweep lane and then normalize that's actually yeah useful so put that up in here you can set the destination where you want those impulse responses to go to I've set it up I've set up the names for them and then when you have your input output selected you put record monitor on you can start recording and the first time I do suggest that you set your levels so keep them low at first the audio sweep sounds goddamn very annoying so keep them low and if you feel that they're low enough and you can check your software mixer and make sure that that's not clipping so that's a good indication your levels are in check and when you've done that you can when you've set up your levels you can do a test like that 
Uh, now it's created an impulse response. I can see in here, nothing clipped, no red lights turn on, or neither did the door. So my level levels are just fine, and we should have a good e IR. So now I can go into Amplitude. I can pick up my guitar. And on Amplitude, you can click here and add it to this list. And I've already tried this out a few times. So I have a few impulse responses here. And they are captured with a little bit different methods. So I'm going to speak about them too. But you just click here. You go to your destination folder you've set up. And you just choose the IR you've created. And I'll do that. All right, here we go. So this is what we got. There's the impulse response. And yeah, you've created yourself an impulse response. It's as simple as that. And of course, you can then tweak the sound of it in Amplitude if you want. You can do these sorts of things, mess with these settings. And we can actually hear how it sounds. So you can make your, your impulse response sound a little bit different than it. So yeah, you can do that and create a different sound compared to the stock. And yeah, I'm going to, last of all, speak a little about the different ways. So I also have a reamp box. And in here, we can actually see the difference on the waveform when I go straight from the audio interface in to the effects return. And if I go to my reamp box and then to the effects return. And here's the difference in waveform. You can see it there. So there's not much, but it's on the top end. And here I actually had to put some uh, acoustic foam on my isolation gap because this is how the and this doesn't sound bad, but this is how the frequency response looked like before I added. And this is after I've added some. And that's actually also recorded with a different mic. So that makes a difference. But still, you can see much more spikes and this is much more leveled and then i have my some of my old favorites and we can see that yeah those are the waveforms from those i have these that i actually bought and then there's my <laughs> So yeah, that's how you make uh, IRs in Studio One with the IR maker and test them out. Really simple. I'll be putting some of these IRs when I get around to it. If you like what you hear, get them. 
But yeah, it's as simple as that. And I will be doing a video about how to do this without the Studio One's Impulse Response Maker. So I'll show you how to do it for instance in Reaper and stuff like that. So if that's your DAW choice, we'll get to that later. But for now, this is how you can create impulse responses out of your cabinets or I'd say speakers. There you go. Have fun. I'm off.